Okay, well, I, I thought I had a little problem here because it was stuck on initializing. So we're back on part two of like uh, server hardware diagnostics for dummies. And, you know, I'm always a dummy at this despite having lots of experience and uh, occasionally make mistakes. Um, now, the CPU that I bought for this thing is a an E5-2609 um, first generation uh, Xeon of this class and um, that CPU is supposed to only support up to DDR3 1066 memory. Now initially when I when I built the other board um, I wanted to go with uh, the best memory that it could it could fit which you know fortunately fit into this board as well of the same class or generation and uh, I couldn't really find 1866 megahertz uh, DDR3 memory that was really reasonable in like a 128 gig kit. So I bought this. And as you can see, that is uh, 12,800R, which is, uh, I believe, uh, 1600 megahertz, right? But this CPU that's in this at the moment is only a, um, a V1 uh, and is supposed to only support, according to the spec sheet, up to 1066. But, uh, you know, and, and, and previously, like just not too long ago, maybe an hour ago, after I, uh, I decided to walk away for a bit, have a coffee, and consider my options, I was even looking on eBay at, like, how much would it cost me to buy 866 megahertz RAM or, or 1066, because that's what it's supposed to support. But, uh, you know, sometimes motherboards are a little smarter and they can downclock memory to match a processor, perhaps. So, you know, I looked at this and I thought, well, I've got all four sticks of memory in here. Maybe that's just asking too much of the CPU. So I thought I'd try. Well, I'll just try one. And then we got uh, magic. It's, it, it booted. So, unfortunately, I don't have a tripod or anything. But, uh, you know, I can turn this off. Because there's there's no boot media or anything, and um, yeah, it's it's boot it's booted, it booted, um, it managed to reconfigure the uh, the one stick by itself instead of having all four sticks of this memory kit that I have uh, to the memory speed that's supported. So I should be able to flash the BIOS on this, and I think I'll have to flash the IPMI uh, firmware version as well, possibly. But uh, yeah, this uh, is looking good. So we can, I'll just turn the power supply off. Count to, to hell, hell, five Hail Marys. <laughs> nice, nice dusty power supply in there. You can see too, kind of. I blew them out with, with a compressor, but still it's kind of dusty. And uh, yeah, we're powered off. And turn it back on. And uh, it doesn't need me to to jump start it. Now initially here when I powered this on with one stick around, I thought it got stuck. But here it is. It got past B7 initializing. It's doing its checks. And it, you know, it blinked the video a couple times. I don't care if it's one stick around as long as it works. Oh, and there we go. And we got bleep, 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 bleep. Initializing IPMI. It's like maybe somebody updated the bias on this. So I don't know. Um, maybe in the next couple hours, I'm just going to install like Windows 10 on this and see what uh, see what I can figure out. And then eventually end up running running Linux. We'll just kind of leave it to do its thing. And I don't know, maybe after it's booted once, uh, or booted a couple times, if it had a bias update on it and wasn't done, um, or allowed to reboot enough, it didn't fully update. Not sure. Yeah, and it's and it has no boot media. So there we go. So uh, this time I'm actually going to like try and turn it right off by uh, by doing a jump start. 
You got to be really careful when you're doing this, though. There we go. And I'll just turn that off. And uh, I don't know. I'm going to fiddle around with the buy setting in this. Maybe, maybe I'll try and do that now. We're only at like five minutes into this video anyway, so. Whoa, there it rebooted itself. For whatever reason it did that. We'll see what the bias has to say about my uh, my attempts to make this thing uh, cooperate with the latest and greatest of its generation. Press delete. Oh, there we go. Yeah, and the date's correct, which is good. Uh, 8 gigs of RAM off of one stick. This thing will run like a terabyte and a half of RAM if you've got the right type of RAM, which is just bazonkers, ridiculous, and, you know, old motherboard like this, you'd think, well, probably could have a lot of potential. And that's true. Um, so let's see here. We've got boot configure, uh, quiet boot, I don't know, I won't play around with too much, I'll just leave that is. Horse bias, retry boot, I don't know, whatever. Watchdog function. Like bias options for days, right? Ah, CPU info. So there we go, we got our, our CPU that I bought. Like I said, it's a E5-2609. It's uh, just, a, just a dual core, or quad core rather, pardon me. I think it is hyper-threaded too, so. That's good, all enabled. Energy efficient, balanced performance. Uh, performance, I'll just, we'll just leave it out of this. Just kind of having a look around here. This is this is typically what you do. Integrated I/O config. I don't know whatever. Uh, I made sure to get a, another motherboard that has uh, PCI Express three. That's that's important. I don't know what ISOC is, but <coughs> excuse me. What about QPI link speed? We want fast. Fast is good. DRAM uh, Rappel, that's like uh, uh, voltage throttling for thermal management or something, I think. So we've got patrol scrub, demand scrub for, uh, for ECC memory stuff, thermal throttling, device tagging, I don't know. Good enough. What about the self bridge? Self bridge is all like peripheral stuff, I think. <coughs> Got a bit of a cough today, so excuse me for that. I don't know. Detected the SSD, that's good. I want UE, UEFI bias only, please. <coughs> Excuse me. Active state power management, let's go auto. Above 4G, disabled because there's no auto. Super I.O.? I don't know. Should be the same thing. I could get a tripod or something for this. And the management engine. So I'll go through this again and I'll make, make notes of the, uh, the versions and stuff because that'll be important uh, later on. 
boot, 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 boot. There we go. So yeah, it seems to be working. I just made one change to enable uh, UEFI support. And that's good that it does UEFI. Uh, if you're gonna boot a, um, a server for a NAS and you wanna use like ZFS, um, Zettabyte file system, it's much, much, much easier to... Maybe I should have turned off that quiet boot. It's much easier to have it boot from uh, from UEFI BIOS. And uh, I think I'll call that success. So more more coming soon. Uh, you know, I'm I'm doing like a one one arm tripod deal here. So and we're about uh, twelve minutes in almost. Um, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll try and do more of these soon. Um, you know, when I, when I get the bias updated, um, I'll, uh, be able to put both CPUs in and hopefully all the rest of the, the faster memory, 128 gigs of memory, and, uh, we'll be good to go. Okay. Uh, cheers folks. Compile long and prosper.